it's been so long since I played. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is K -K -K Coffee Break, and welcome to the Coffee Cast Amateur Attack Edition, where we pull two players in from the audience and pit them against one another for our own amusement. Thank you, Insom, for in uh, <laughs> for informing me that this is indeed Entombed Valley. On the top right side, spawning in that one o'clock position, we do have a returning Protoss player, a very accomplished Protoss player here on the Coffee Cast. It is going to be Exion Pure who is a Masters Protoss player, and on the bottom right-hand side, spawning as our light pink Zerg player. I've heard quite a bit about him. He is very accomplished in all the races, but his main race is Zerg. We do have Darkened Light spawning once again as our pink Zerg player on this lower right-hand side of Entombed Valley. That is about the 5 o'clock position. And we were at... Sleepers, you weren't, you weren't around. I had, I had you pending for like a minute and a half. Like a minute and a half and I was just waiting for you to come and I wanted you to be here, but I also really wanted to get a game going. I, I, I do feel kind of bad. I truly do. It makes you feel better. I, I'm excited to have Darkened on the show. Woo! I've never gotten to see him play before, but apparently he, uh, he raped Sleeper Cells over and over and over when Sleeper was learning to play Zerg. He uh, just had Dark and Light just... I, I think it was Bunker Rush him over and over and over and pretty much just uh, massacre him for a little while. So I'm kind of excited to, uh, yeah, let's get going here. Should probably start, you know, talking talking about the game. This is this is all that early game filler when it's like, so, uh, there's a pylon going down and stuff is happening. And so you always have to find like that little bit of extra story or whatever to talk about in the early game. Otherwise, there's just like this long awkwardness that you really just need to find a way to fill. So yeah, and I'm still kind of in that stage here. Still kind of in that stage. So let's see if we can find something to talk about. Let's see. It looks like Pure is going to be setting up to do that expansion right after that forge. Sometimes you'll see the cannon if you're a little bit worried about pressure. Apparently. Uh, Pure is not too worried about that. Actually, does have a pylon in this third base. Is this the third base? Yeah, this is. Uh, did manage to pylon block the natural expansion coming across, setting up a cannon in the third base as well to start attacking this hatchery. Going to be kind of annoying for Dark and Light to to uh, handle here. So we're about to see how Dark and Light. Uh, crisis management it does go here does get another pylon down to help block this cannon off to help this cannon stay alive just a little bit longer a couple of zerglings are wailing away at this pylon and both the pylon and the cannon are cancelled close to completion so dark and light doing just a fine job actually we do have a dancing zergling here only one uh, zergling actually attacking that pylon kind of an interesting uh, and amusing little glitch I must say and there we go, does get that rallied round to go ahead and attack that pylon. Natural expansion does now finish for Dark and Light, just a little bit ahead of Exion Pures. So we're just going to be going into a very nice standard game, even going to be taking down this pylon in the natural expansion and get a third base going. And ladies and gentlemen, this is about as standard as you can get for a Zerg opening. Maybe a little bit of fluctuation for the Protoss player, you know, uh, taking, putting a pylon and a couple of cannons in the third base as well. Not unheard of at all, but I mean, it, it does differ just a little bit from, you know, just the standard one pylon over at the Napster expansion and just kind of macroing up after that. So it's always nice to see a little bit of variation in the play. Over here, I give you shenanigans. Thank you, Pure, because it does make it, uh, it does make it a little bit easier to cast, a little bit more amusing to do stuff for. We do have a two... <laughs> Oh gosh, I love the trolling that happens from Pure in these games. We do have a, uh, I believe this is a two unit wall off. Oh, no, never mind. That's a, that's a one unit wall off. Just get a single zealot in the wall. It kind of looks like two. This does look like a really large opening, but if you do select both the buildings, you can actually see just that, uh, just, I tried to point with my finger to show you how big the opening was. It's actually about the size of an index finger. It's, it's quite perfect. Plus one weapons is coming onto the field for pure, perfectly normal stuff, doing a one gate robo. A lot of the times you'll actually see two additional gateways added on before you get this robo down on the field. Just because it gives you a little bit of extra defense in that early to early mid game against any sort of uh, heavy zergling or roach attack. But that's not going to be the biggest deal in the world. Exile Pure just going to go for a little bit of a faster tech play so that he can go ahead and get some of those higher higher level units out. Maybe that Colossus probably going to be going for a fairly quick Colossus. Always a, uh, a nice unit to have in, well, let's be honest, any matchup. And unfortunately, rather required in a lot of situations as well. Does not give a lot of flexibility to that Protoss play. We have a sneaky Overlord coming in here. I, th I think that he's at the front for a little while and then just kind of 
dodged out and around going to be coming into the main base and seeing <gasps> absolutely nothing because there's just absolutely standard stuff going on in the field right now we do have four gateways and a robotics so there's those other three gateways I was talking about once again totally totally standard just to get those down in the field because it does allow you to have a little bit of uh, crisis management just in case something crazy happens do have a warp gate and by that I mean a warp prism coming out onto the field now going to be able to get a little bit more shenanigan in -in 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 action coming out and that has actually rallied through this nice little island base here now if I may say this is like one of the most worthless areas in the game I honestly I, I haven't done a lot of casts on this map I haven't done a lot of amateur or pro casts on this map but nobody ever expands here ever ever I don't know why it's just it's kind of a crappy spot this island actually kind of needs to be cancelled that's going to go up and uh, I don't know if it's actually going to be able to save that it's going to be kind of a close call Zergly is getting it awfully low on health and that actually is going to get sniped so so easily so you know I don't I don't think that's going to be able to uh, last all that long I'll be surprised actually if that is not taken out fairly shortly here a few zillas are going to be running up into the third base now dark light does not have all that much over in this immediate area to defend against it does have this one single queen which is going to be attacking the zealot up front who is actually already in the middle line i'm going to be surprised actually if pure goes for this queen completely actually he does but dark and light not migrating that queen at all and now his drones are completely unprotected and he's going to have to run those away actually going to be using those to try to kill the zealot who are now target fighting the hatchery that's not going to be nearly enough firepower to keep the hatchery down and in the end i feel like that attack could have done a whole lot more damage than it actually did we do have the warp prism coming back over into this third base now soccer is getting dropped down into the third base and more being warped in as well as long as well as a single zealot to help out this third base might actually fall it's going to be kind of a close call reinforcing roaches do come onto the battlefield however now the drones getting a little bit surround on those stalkers and dark light is going to have enough to hold this third base once again going to be seeing a little bit of micro ring action coming out of Exxon pure not going to be leaving these stalkers behind are you there we go picking those back up now it's going to be able to do just a little bit more harassment However, Dark and Light is completely prepared for this Warp Prism at this point in time. Just needs to not forget that it's here. That's something a lot of players do unfortunately make the mistake of doing, is uh, forgetting, you know, when they're mutilous cornered in the map, or forgetting when there's a Medivac or a Warp Prism sitting around. And actually, I'm surprised he's going for this, uh, this little attack so early. I would actually love to see him just kind of keep this here for a, a long time, just to see if he can make his opponent forget about that. Exile and Pure actually not, uh, has not expanded to this third base yet. And considering it's only 11 minutes into the game, it feels like it's so much later because so much has already happened. And that is uh, pretty awesome. So, it looks like we are just now going to be taking this food base for Exxon Pure. Probably going to be getting that probe over there. There we go, indeed. Going to be sending the probe over there. I would like to see a fourth base actually out of Dark and Light fairly shortly as well. As he's getting to this kind of money drone amount where uh, with one, one or two more rounds of drones, he was sitting perfectly for three base. And that's always a great time to go ahead and take a fourth base. And that is indeed exactly what we are going to be seeing. Going to be able to take down this pylon. Took care of the pylon that was over here outside of this worthless island base. And everything's going to be dandy dandy. Going into this mid game point now, Dark and Light has quite a nice supply lead 135 over 84, 75 drones. That is beautiful to the 50 probes of Pure, who needs to get a few more probes on a third base. However, I believe the, the, the perfect number, ideally, you want to have 24 harvesters per base. That is two per mineral patch, 16 there, and three per geyser. So another, uh, another six. So 22, I suppose, 22. So you want 22, and there you go. And this is indeed Pure's first attempt at a third base, which is getting scouted by Dark and Light already with this Overlord sitting overhead. A little bit of Warp Prism harassment over here at this uh, fourth base for Dark and Light. Not probably going to be able to do too much damage to the army for Dark and Light. Right on top of this thing. Actually, really nice micro coming out of Pure. Now he's just showing off a little bit, but that is all right, because that is actually fairly impressive micro. We do have Blink on the way. As well as, I, I believe that we've been getting, getting quite a few mortals on the field. Yes, indeed, three mortals, a fourth one on the way as well. A Templar Archive coming onto the field. So probably going to be seeing a little bit of Storm and Archon action. And that is pretty awesome because so often you just see, uh, see Protoss players kind of go straight for that Colossus. A lot of times it's double Colossus production. And not too often do you get to see this heavy gateway, this Templar tech play coming out like we are seeing Pure do here. So I'm kind of excited to see how exactly he handles this. And I like the fact 
Dark and Light already going to be getting a Spore Crawler at this base, which uh, I, I don't know if that's necessary to defend against Dark Templar or the Swart Prism, but it never hurts to have a Spore Crawler sitting at your base because it's just, uh, I mean, it just helps defend against so many random uh, different things. Storm is on the way, so we will be seeing these uh, High Templar come on the field rather than being used specifically for the Archons. I would like to actually see a little bit of charge come down on the field as well. We not a ton of extra gas for Pure right now, as he is just now getting this third base established. We see that he already does have those two assimilators. A lot of roaches coming up the ramp. I don't think that's going to be nearly enough roaches. Those roaches are already move order, not an attack order. And about a third of the roaches actually die before a single shot is fired by our Zerg player. A little bit of a slip up there by Dark and Light. And now, oh no, have more roaches rallying up into the Protoss base. And he is going to lose all those, especially with those forces behind them. That's an additional eight roaches that are just dying for free and while dark and light is sitting in a pretty good position at a maxed out army you never ever ever want to give up free units like that just not a good situation to be in looks like we did have a little bit of war prism harassment once again coming out for Exion Pure. We're going to be trying to do a little bit more here uh, warping in a few extra zealots and probably going to be dropping in the Star Control to be able to take up the fifth base only Zerglings right now over here to be able to uh, deal with these zealots that's not going to be enough where are the reinforcing roaches there they are, they're getting fairly close, but are they going to be here in time to save this fourth base? It's going to be kind of a close call. This is getting focus fired down very, very quickly, and it is... No, it's so close, but it is going to be canceled. So a good cancel, at least, by Dark and Light, getting a few of those resources back. This warp pit still kind of sitting over the uh, this kind of dead space area where only air units can go. It's going to be kind of sitting there, and an interesting little thing I would like to point out is that when you have units in the warp prism, and which one is the turn? There it is. You like to see this little orb glowing right here. And when there are no units, that orb is not glowing. Whee! Fleet Bacon is on the way. And yes, I did say bacon because bacon is delicious. As well as three additional robotics facilities. My goodness. And the robotics bay as well. It looks like uh, Pure, after seeing so many roaches, did decide to switch a little bit off that Templar attack. Does have four High Templar, which really, four High Templar, that's two storms apiece, eight storms total. That is actually uh, a, a pretty good number. You don't really need too many more than that. Could also use those for feedbacks on those investors, which are now popping out onto the field. Pure, there we go, finally getting a fourth base established. Seems to be just a couple of minutes behind in all of his expansions. I would have liked to see him take those a little bit earlier. He's now down actually almost 80 supply. Here comes a little bit of engagement. Not the full army for Dark and Light. However, a couple of feedbacks do go down on top of those investors. Not really doing all that much damage. In fact, wasting a little bit of energy getting those infested Terrans out onto the map. In the meantime, we do have a Roach coming around from the opposite side, trying to force the Cantle on that Nexus, but he does not get it. A nice one girl does go down on top of that army, but at what cost? He just lost four infestors due to that that little misstep again dark and light not quite on top of his game not on top of his game at all now broodlord tech is coming out on the field however the mothership well on the way already that mothership will have enough energy to vortex by the time the broodlords do indeed get on the field extended thermal lance is coming on the way as well roach is just kind of sitting up in this corner i don't like where those are sitting i feel like he could find a better spot for those and once again we do have so so many robotics on the field at this point and I, I, I would like that if Pure was near to Max. The thing about this, uh, the, the, the reason why I would like it if he was near to Max is because, oh, actually we have a lot of Zerglings running up into this base. Looks like he's just going to try to sacrifice them, do a little bit of damage, to free up a little bit of life. Beautiful storms go down on top of those Zerglings and need to warp in on that base, but no warping. And now the Zerglings, oh, a very nice force field going down on that ramp. Does have detection here as well, so we're going to be able to take those out. I don't know where the detection is coming from, to be quite honest. And there, and now they're out of detection range. But uh, the reason, oh, and now we actually have a roach counterattack coming into the fourth base as well. Might be able to pick up the tap tree. Uh, pardon me, the next, but no, actually too many units here for pure. And there goes, the, there comes the reinforcing army as well. But a lot of probes did go down there. So I suppose these roaches over here did do a little bit of damage. I still would have liked to see them like up on the high ground or something. They just did not seem very hidden there. And actually, a a few workers going down, not a ton, but a few, putting uh, Dark and Light actually at a negative 7 instead of a negative 14. If I'm getting this number right, I don't really feel like thinking too much about it at this point in time. This is actually a fairly good army composition out of Exxon Pure, but still, I feel like he needs... Oh my goodness, actually killing his sentries off to free up supply. And I... 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 I mm, okay. 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 I can go for that. I guess I can understand that. 
Mothership is on the field now. Needs to get some Colossus out on the map to uh, be able to deal with these Broodlords. All the Broodlings need to be able to do a little bit of splash damage to take those out. Quite a few Broodlords. Actually, only three Broodlords. Another one morphing in at this point in time. Quite a few spine crawlers coming down on the field as well to free up some supply. Now up on five bases. Going to be able to pick off some Corruptors as well as a bunch of people begin entering my <laughs> room. Oh my goodness, Pure once again now getting that quadruple Colossus production coming onto the field. That's going to be great in the upcoming battle, however, he's just kind of sitting back and Dark and Light's just going to let him macro up. And with all of the Brute Lords on the field, I mean, they're, they're just not going to be able to do that much as the, the Mothership is on the field. We have Archons coming onto the field, we have Colossus coming on the field. We have every single piece of tier 3 tech on the field for Exile and Pure, and what does Dark and Light have to say for it? Well. Four Broodlords. O almost six Broodlords. There's going to be six by the time the final engagement comes around. But I, I just don't feel like Dark and Light's going to be sitting in that good of a position. Also, Exxon Pure going to be set up very, very well to re his army. Has four robotics on the field. Eight, at least. Eight gateways. I don't know. I'm probably missing some somewhere around here. Has cannons up around all his bases to be able to defend against potential counterattacks. Is expanding all over the place just because he's maxed out and he, he may as well at this point. It looks like Pure is actually going to be sitting in a very, very good position in this upcoming engagement. The upgrade, 2-3, almost 3-3, three, three, 4 Ecton, Pure. And if I could even find a unit under all these overlords, where is the army for Dark and Light right now? I actually can't find it at all. 0-0 zero, zero upgrades for the Broodlord, so no air attack upgrades. Just now getting that plus one, just about to finish up. This is actually a great time for Exile Pure to engage this army, especially the corrupt, pardon me, the Infestors, not quite completely in position. Could use to move a little bit north to help this army be able to engage properly. Broodlords are going to need to be slowly picking away at the spawn and might actually lose a Broodlord for free right there And that Broodlord not going to be get aw getting away in time Dark and Light cannot afford to sacrifice units right now Just trying to morph in more Broodlords I don't know if that's the right response at this point in time Seven Broodlords but so many Blink Stalkers on the field as well once again as that Mothership Storms, Archons I'm just wondering how exactly Dark and Light is going to be able to engage this army I, I just don't see anything. I mean, he has absolutely no ground army. He has 93 drones right now, which is actually severely hurting him as he can just not make enough army to be able to counter Exile and Pure right now. Pure going to be moving into this fourth base and going to be able to take that out without... Oh, oh no, two hit points. There we go. Moving one soccer up to take that out. I was going to be just furious with him if he allowed that to live with two hit points left on the map. So, Dark and Light just needs to actually sack drones. I mean, he has he has no other options right now. That's the only thing he can do. He's actually sitting at 8,700 minerals. The best way to do that, just make a crap load of spine crawlers, as that gives you defense and gives you a little supply. He has more than enough minerals to be able to take care of that. Looks like probes were pulled at this uh, fourth base for a moment for Pure, but just going to go ahead and put those back on, get a few cannons back into position, and I'm actually curious why Pure is not engaging right now. Oh, it's because he has a crap load of Infestors in his natural expansion, which are currently taking out, well, nothing at this point in time, because the stocks are going to be blinking up on the high ground, the Colossus are going to be coming up to engage these Infested Terrans, and I don't think Pure lost anything in that engagement, and what Dark and Light lost was a lot of Infestors, and the energy that was potentially going to be used for fungal growth when the final engagement does come up. So I, I guess that's one way to sack supply, but generally you don't want to sack the units that will be helping you. You kind of want to sack the units that are going to be doing absolutely nothing. Actually, the Stalkers getting a little bit bunched up on that Zealot there as they cannot get out of the base. And gosh, there's, there's a perfectly good path right there in the Stalkers. Uh, whatever. Whatever. S I mean, I, once again... I, I, there's really nothing much else to say other than the fact that there's too many corruptors and not enough ground army. We actually saw Sleeper Cells make a mistake kind of like this on the last time of terror attack on Monday when he tried to engage a mass gateway army with just a bunch of Colossus and it did not end well for them. That is kind of what's going on for Dark and Light right now. He has no meat to his army on the ground to be able to help save the Broodlords that are up in the sky. Look at this number of Corruptors. There are only four Colossus on the map and a Mothership. That is just not going to be able to do anything. And I mean, while they will be able to snipe the Cloaking out, I mean, there's Overseer's Galore on this map. The Broodlords actually flying straight into that army in four? Vortexing it for some reason. I'm not sure why he actually could have just picked those Broodlords straight off the map, but instead deciding to vortex those and engage them later. Mothership actually, oh, is going to be picked off as that last Corruptor does fall. 
I would not be surprised to see that back on the field. Yes, indeed, that is already getting remade by Exxon Pure. Five Rublers fall immediately for Dark and Light. Going to be making eight more. There is actually absolutely no point to that, as he has nothing on the ground, making four roaches. That is not the tank that you need on the ground to be able to defend your Rublers. Stalkers are blinking under the, underneath these cocoons. Those Brutalords are going to die instantly. Colossus just ripping apart the Brutalings on the ground. And the Immortals doing a great job of taking out all the Spine Crawlers, which you did not see because they died so freaking fast. We still have four High Temple on the field with max energy to be able to storm any sort of ground army that does come out and feedback and festers that potentially come on the field. Dark and Light is just falling all over the place at this point. Can't even mount a counterattack right now because he just does not have the units. One from Gorilla Tails to go down on top of that army, but it's just not going to be enough. But wasting a lot of energy on these Infested Terrans as well, which when you have four Colossus on the field, do absolutely no damage, especially with the Archons there as well, which are currently doing 47 damage to gr ground units. And there is the GG from Dark and Light, who put up a decent fight in the mid game, but in the late game, just had no army to support himself. And Exxon Pure showing why he deserves to be in that Masters League right there. Getting a great army. Uh, that, that was actually a beautiful composition. You couldn't really have asked for anything better than Blink Stalker, Storm, Archon, Mothership, Colossus. I mean, I guess you could have thrown a couple carriers in there just for shits and giggles. But, you know, th there's almost no point at that spot. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of moments to get the next game set up here. Oh, whoa. My moderator's actually right on top of that. I'm going to play music for a couple seconds while I take a quick drink. And then I'll be right back with the next game. I will also be pulling sleeper cells back in to co-cast with me.